Good afternoon, Go Ruko! You almost got quieter when I said that. <laughs> right, this is going to be a kind of game show. It's not a kind of game show you're likely to have over in the US, something a bit weird, a bit British. I can just, trust me here, it's going to be an awful lot of fun. But I do need you as an audience to respond, okay? I need you to be vocal. So we're going to try that again. And this time, you're going to make like enough noise for 350 people, okay? Good afternoon, Go Ruko! <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Okay, I'm going to need three things from you all as an audience. Okay? The first thing you need to know is the game we're about to play is very hard. It's a huge challenge for the speakers involved. So when you feel they have done well, I need you to raise those voices, put those hands together, and let them know. Okay? It's very daunting being up here. Just give them all the encouragement you can. The second thing you need to know is that the game involves challenges, where the panelists will put just a little bit of criticism on what's just been said, and they're pretty subjective. So if you feel some of the challenges are a little harsh, maybe, by all means, let us know that as well. And the third thing is actually the very first thing, because each show starts exactly the same way. I'm going to boisterously welcome you all to the show. And once I've done that, uh, I need you, I'm going to play in the piano music, which is just the theme music for the show. As soon as you hear that piano, I need you all to raise the proverbial roof. Think you can do that for me, Go Ruko? <laughs> You're getting better. Okay, here goes. Welcome to Just a Minute. <laughs> That is right. Good afternoon and welcome to a very special edition of Just a Ruby Minute here in the spectacularly oversized fruit that is New York City, New York. Uh, my name is Andrew Faraday and we're going to play the game of Just a Minute. It's a huge part of British culture. It's been going to our, our audiences for almost half a decade and it's slowly finding a home in the Ruby community. So what's going to happen each round, I'm going to select one of these witty, insightful, and of course terrified individuals currently arrayed before you, and give them a topic that's of some kind of interest to the Ruby development community. They'll then have to speak about that topic for 60 seconds without hesitation, including pauses or hedging noises, repetition of words other than the topic sentence they've already used in that round, or deviation where they're no longer talking about the topic. Now, if the other panelists discover these rules being broken, they can challenge by pressing their buzzers. Someone buzz for me. Excellent. Now, you'll notice one of our panelists has turned green and the timer has stopped. So what will happen there is I will ascertain the nature of their challenge, and if they're correct, they'll gain a point for a correct challenge, and then take control of the topic, be allowed to continue speaking, until the minute's over or they're on, they are in turn challenged for exactly the same reasons. Now, uh, whoever's speaking at the end of the minute gains a point for doing so, and if the challenge is incorrect, the original speaker gains a point for being interrupted and is allowed <coughs> to continue where they left off. Now, the end of the minute sounds just a little bit like this. And that is the whole game, a very simple set of rules and a very difficult set of rules to follow. So, now that we know the rules, let's meet the panel. First up, closest to me, we have the Chief Zealous Officer at Coding Zeal, and in his own words, Master of Smile Generation. Please welcome Adam Cuppy. <laughs> Next up, we have got a Senior Engineer at GoSpot Check, a huge part of both Cubmo and Bridge Foundry. And this being her third panel, a Ruby Jam veteran, please welcome Kinsey Ann Durham. <laughs> Next up, we have got the co founder and director at Ignition Works, a uh, very prolific public speaker and the presenter of the Ruby Book Club podcast, Nadia Odineu. <laughs> Nayo. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we've got a senior developer from the New York Public Library. Organizer for eight of the ten years of Go Ruko from right here in New York, Stephen Shaw. <laughs> so, without any further ado, let's move on to the first round, appropriately known as round one. Kinsey, as our returning panelist, you're up first to start, and your topic is my startup idea. So, that's my startup idea, Kinsey and Durham, for 60 seconds, starting now. My 
startup idea is the best idea that anyone has ever heard of. It relates to dogs because I am obsessed with that breed of animal. And I really just want to stare at pictures of cute puppies all day. So my startup idea is to just have a website where you can look at these creatures as long as you want. <laughs> Whenever you're having a bad day or you're not feeling well or you're... Your I idea is stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. Thoroughly mixed response there. Wait, uh, that's not one of them? No, that's not one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I forgot the rules. Sorry. I don't think I can give you that within the rules okay. of just a minute. Sorry, uh, I forgot for a moment there. It was an entertaining interruption. However, Kinsey, you gain a point uh, for being wrongly interrupted. You have 22 seconds remaining on my startup idea. Before I was rudely interrupted by my teammate to the right of me, I was talking about my startup. Repetition I? So there was more a lot of eyes. Uh, so that's completely correct. Uh, Stephen, you get a point. And control the subject for 13 seconds, starting now. My startup idea is so complicated, it cannot be summed up in the short amount of time afforded. <laughs> <laughs> Kinsey! Hesitation. Yes, definitely hesitation there. Uh, so, Kinsey, you get an additional point. You have 3.7 seconds remaining, starting now. Anyways, back to my startup idea. <laughs> okay. So, that's Kinsey and I'm showing fine fighting form, currently in the lead with three points. Okay, uh, we're going to move on. Adam Cuppy? It's yep. your start, and your subject is user stories. So that's user stories. Adam Cuppy, for 60 seconds, starting now. As we begin to speak about user stories, it reminds me of the first user story I happened to write myself. It always begins with, if I want to do something of great importance and meaning, I will begin by looking specifically at the way in which the user story is structured for the user. If nothing... Oh. Kinsey. I was going to say repetition of story, because it's stories. Ah. Did you say story twice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very definitely in the rules that plural and singular are different. Uh, hey, he said story, Adam's it's got not some stories. friends in the audience. Uh, that was... Oh. <laughs> Nice job, Kinsey. That was a you technically said story twice. That was a technically correct challenge from Kinsey and Durham. Uh, oh. You gain a point. Oh, wow. I don't make the rules. Hey, I want to <laughs> win. Uh, uh, they don't like you, Kinsey, but you have 36 hey, seconds. Hey, I was right. Now. It doesn't matter. It was right. <laughs> so you have 36 seconds starting now. I use a tool called Pivotal Tracker to write user stories at my current company called Go Spot Check. I really like the application, and it's built in my hometown of Denver, Colorado. It's really nice to use, and I can easily accept, reject. Repetition of I. Yes, that was the third eye. <laughs> so can I just... <laughs> so, Adam, you have regained control of this topic for nine seconds, starting now. I particularly prefer the use of JIRA for its simplicity <laughs> and raw ability to really hone in on the... Adam speaking at the end of the minute there, so currently we have Kinsey in the lead with four. Adam trailing just behind on two. Stephen's got one. Nadia still to score. So, <sighs> Stephen, you're up first to speak. Your subject is how many arguments is too many? <laughs> <laughs> how many arguments is too many? Stephen Shaw, starting now. How many arguments is too many is an interesting question. It could be that you're talking about arguments with your significant other, or arguments passed into a function also known as a method. <laughs> Ruby has 
Hesitation. Yeah. That was hesitation. A man must oh. breathe. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give genius room. You gotta, you gotta really get in there on that buzzer. You, you do need to breathe, but you definitely did pause. So. Uh, <laughs> you need to breathe. Adam, you have 46 seconds With remaining. Topic? Okay. How many arguments is too many starting now? I believe that arguments can be summed up in a correlation between the arg and the ment of reason. Now, as we look specifically at what might be too many, we can ask ourselves most importantly, is too many too many, or is too many right many? Too many? Too many is part of the topic sentence. Oh. So that <laughs> <laughs> Technically or So uh, I, I didn't explain that properly at the start. The topic sentence is basically fair game. You can repeat as much as you like within that round. Even so uh, because that was my fault, I'm not going to award a point this time, but I am going to give control back to Adam Cuppy. You now all know the rules, so they will be kept from now on. Okay. Uh, so Adam, you have 27 seconds. How many arguments is too many starting now? Looking back at how many arguments is too many, <laughs> I reconsider the notion that too many can be too many if really arguments are summed up as Repetition of summed. Summed, yes. Summed. summed. He said that when he first was talking. God, I don't understand that word. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, you said that before. I said some. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that was a repetition? That's a few of you. Who thinks it wasn't? <laughs> that is now not my fault anymore. So, <laughs> Adam, you gain the point and have 14 seconds remaining. How many arguments is too many starting now? Repeating back to too many arguments, I continue to ask my... Oh. Repetition of I. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> come on. That was, he's got me for that. <clears throat> so, Kinsey, yes, you gain the point. You currently have five and eight seconds remaining on how many arguments is too many starting now. How many arguments is too many is a very good question. And when I refer to... <laughs> Hey. Excellent. So, Kinsey, you are still in the lead with six. Adam, you're trailing with four. The other two, you can join in the game soon, I'm sure. <laughs> so, Nadia, you're up first. Your subject is naming variables. Naming variables. Uh, Nadia, starting now. I hope that I can speak very well for a minute on naming variables, given that there are zero points by my name right now. When coding, it is important that your intention is very clear when naming variables. Some people like to name variables with very long descriptive names. For example, if you are coding an application to do with dogs, and there are many different breeds of them in your work, then you may have a variable which is something like German Shepherd Terrier Puppy Chihuahua <laughs> Dalmatian. <laughs> if you are working with 101 Dalmatians in... <laughs> No points yet, and you were sitting on that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amazing. That is absolutely so. Uh, Nadia, you gain a point for speaking at the end of the minute, and another for speaking uninterrupted for a full minute. <laughs> that happens very rarely, and has not yet happened on Tech Jam at all. You are the first one to achieve that oh. particular <laughs> accolade. That is amazing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> How do you follow that, what? Kinsey? Uh, <laughs> you're up next, uh, and your subject is who, sh who you should be following on Twitter. 
who you should be following on Twitter. So that's Kinsey and Durham, 60 seconds starting now. I have a very long list of different software engineers that you should be following on Twitter, and they are as follows. <laughs> Adam Cuppy, Nadia, Steven, Sandy Metz, Rachel Ray. Um, <laughs> Uh, hesitation. So, yes, that was a hesitation. Uh, <laughs> so, Adam, you gained a point for that. You have 38 seconds remaining. Who you should be following on Twitter starting now? I believe the people you should follow on Twitter are the attendees here at GoRuco, amongst many other conferences. Please feel free to yell those out at will. First and foremost, I believe Tender Love is a great example of someone you can follow on Twitter. You can also follow, of course, Jim Bransky, Bill Jordan, Susan Sarandon, Kelly Powell, Kelly Ripa, John. Kizzy. Repetition of Kelly. Repetition of Kelly. <laughs> For what it's worth, you, you all missed the fact he said follow more than once, yeah. and the subject uh, but, is following. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, just, you know, I'm calling you out on that one, but nobody else did. Uh, <laughs> so, Kinsey, you have 10 seconds remaining. Who you should be following on Twitter, starting, <laughs> starting now. Once again, as I was saying before, I was... Hi. 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 So Nadia, you've gained a point, and you have six seconds remaining. Who you should be following on Twitter, starting now. I think that you shouldn't be following anybody on Twitter. <laughs> so Nadia gets a point for speaking at the end of that round. And the next one's a bit of a curveball. Adam, you're up first to speak, and the subject is how to write a regex. <laughs> This is going to be fun, I can tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, Adam Cuppy, how to write a regex starting now. The first step in writing a regex is to open up the computer. From that point, you will select the IDE that is the most appropriate for the task at hand. I prefer to look specifically at the beginning of the line, followed by the second character, the third character, <laughs> Kinsey. Repetition of character. Repetition of character, of course. So, uh, then again, you've got to take over the subjects. <laughs> Kinsey, you have 40 seconds remaining. How to write a regex starting now. How to write a regex is something that I learned from one of my fellow co-workers. His name is Ben Horn, and he attended Turing School or deviation. 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 That has nothing to do with regexes. <laughs> <laughs> anyone who talk about regexes. Uh, so Nadia, you have 23 seconds remaining on how to write a regex starting now. I am going to tell you about how to write a regex. When it is time to write a regex, open up something called rubula.com. It gives you a playground where you can practice different ways to write your regex. Uh, repetition, you. You, there was you and there was oh. your. Oh, those so are that, different? Yes. Oh. My apologies. So uh, that was an incorrect challenge. Nadia, you have an additional point. And 3.6 seconds. <laughs> Yeah. on how to write a regex starting now. As I was saying about <laughs> repetition of I. Ooh. She said yes. a lot the yeah. first time. She did. Uh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> she said it. I, she said it. Yeah, Adam agrees with me. It, 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 it was correct, but there is uh, less than two seconds to go. Uh, so, Kinsey, you do gain a point, and you have 1.3 seconds on how to write a regex starting now. How to... <laughs> Feels so cruel for that subject. <laughs> okay, so currently Kinsey's in the lead with 10. 
Nadia's got six. Adam slipped to third uh, with five. Stephen currently on one. Now, Stephen, you're first to speak, and your subject is going to New York. So going to New York, Stephen Shaw, starting now. <laughs> but, uh, hesitation. Hesitation, correct. <laughs> <laughs> it does help if you speak. <laughs> so, Nadia, you've uh, gained a point and you've the topic of going to New York for 59 seconds, <laughs> starting now. I really like going to New York. Let me tell you about going to New York. I go to New York for one purpose only, and that is to attend Goruko, which is a fascinating conference at which all of you people are attending. Last time I was in New York was to attend Garuko, and I just realized... Kinsey. <laughs> Repetition of Garuko. Of Garuko? And I. And I. And attend. <laughs> and attend. <laughs> uh, completely correct, Kinsey. So uh, you're currently on 11 points. You have 35 seconds on going to New York starting now. Going to New York is one of my favorite pastimes because there are a lot of people that I know here between friends like Tara, who some of you met last night, and family members that live here in Brooklyn. Going to New York is exciting. There's a lot of humans walking around. It's very crowded, unlike Denver. Adam. Very, repetition of very. Repetition of very, correct. So, Adam, <coughs> you've regained the subject and 3.9 seconds, near enough four seconds, on going to New York starting now. My favorite thing in going to New York is to visit <laughs> We will never know the end of that sentence. We will never know. We will never know. Okay, uh, Nadia, you're up next. And your subject is my talk at GoRuco. So that's uh, Nadia on my talk at GoRuco starting now. My talk at GoRuco was all about code hospitality. I want to tell you two stories about my talk <laughs> at Garuto. The first one is about the time a friend came to stay with me. She messaged saying that she wanted to move to London. I said, great, tidied up my flat, went to pick her up from the airport, created a guide for her. In Repetition of her. Repetition of her, correct. That, that was, was half like a minute. Times. That was good. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I feel bad. Uh, so, yeah, Kinsey, you've got half a minute remaining on my talk at GoRuco, which hasn't happened yet, <laughs> starting now. My talk at GoRuco is happening right after this panel, and I will be talking about code readability. And earlier, when. <laughs> Yeah, there was lots of ands there. Uh, yeah. So, Nadia, you've uh, gained a point and regained the subject for 17 seconds uh, on my talk at GoRuco starting now. Let me tell you some more about my <coughs> talk at GoRuco, which hopefully was intended. <laughs> Kinsey. Hesitation. Hesitation, definitely. Uh, so. <laughs> Kinsey, you have nine seconds. Uh, just to be clear on repetition, you can't say anything you said earlier this round. Uh, so, nine seconds on my talk at GoRuco, starting now. You all should be very excited and enthusiastic and... Repetition oh. on very again? Very again, yes. And and. and I and. said and like a million times. <laughs> so, Stephen's got a point. <laughs> And richly deserved. Uh, be ready to speak quickly. <laughs> so Stephen Shaw has 2.5 seconds on my talk at GoRuco starting now. My talk at GoRuco has not happened.
Excellent. Uh, Kinsey, you're up next. Your subject is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. Kinsey and Durham for 60 seconds, starting now. Stack Overflow has an office in Denver, and I have the pleasure of going over there to talk to their developers. But mostly, I use Stack Overflow to research things that I uh, spasm in my hand. <laughs> uh, well, that's correct. It is not one of the rules. <laughs> so uh, Kinsey gets a point for being uh, possibly tactically interrupted. Uh, so Kinsey, you have 45 seconds remaining on Stack Overflow starting now. Stack Overflow for researching problems that I don't know. I'll... Repetition, that's a third eye? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure you might have, re have repeated research. Was, was it research or researching? I'm not sure. Okay. That, that would have also been valid. Okay, Stephen. Uh, you have 39 seconds on Stack Overflow starting now. Stack Overflow is a lightweight, extensible framework for making me look more intelligent to my boss, coworkers, <laughs> parents, and significant other. Not only that, but I can go home looking my son in the eye after using Stack Overflow. It's a wonderful website that provides answers to commonly posed questions in the software development community. They have a reputation for being difficult to get a job at, but have a very rewarding dental care system. Adam. Repetition of have. Have, Ooh. correct. Can you give him have a point? <laughs> no, I cannot. Uh, for software reasons and for the rules. Uh, so, Adam, uh, you have 2.7 seconds remaining on Stack Overflow starting now. Stack Overflow is a great story. <laughs> So, Adam Cuffey speaking at the end of that minute, gains a point for doing so, gets into second place, just ahead of Nadia and Stephen, and Kinsey's quite a long way ahead of all of you. Uh, okay, Adam, you're up next to speak. Your subjects, Matt is nice, so we are nice. Uh, we have a rule in Tech Jam that the, the real just a minute doesn't, I should explain now. You are allowed to use common short forms of the topic. So in this case, uh, Minaswan, or Minaswan, however you choose to pronounce it, is also fair game to repeat. Or, of course, any of the words in the topic. So, Adam, Matt's is nice, so we are nice. 60 seconds starting now. Minaswan, Manaswan, Manaswan, however you choose to pronounce this as an acronym for Matt's is nice, so we are nice, is entirely up to you. However you choose to start. Repetition of you. Yes, repetition of you. Uh, Nadia, you gain a point. You have 45 seconds remaining. Mats is nice, so we are nice, starting now. I have a very interesting story about Miniswan, which stands for Mats is nice, so we are nice. I was at RubyConf last year in Atlanta, and Matt gave a keynote presentation about new things coming in the language. And he had a slide which had Minuswan. Repetition had? Had, those are a few hads there. So uh, Stephen, you gained a point, and you have 21 seconds remaining. Matt's is nice, so we are nice, starting now. Matt's is nice, so we are nice, also known as Midaswan, is a thought that's given out in the Ruby community and accepted as common wisdom. I've heard it echoed by fellow developers such as Joshua Knowles, Brian Helmkamp, Mike D'Alessio, and my favorite human being in the world, Luke Mulia. <laughs> Excellent, Stephen Shaw clawing back some points there. Uh, slowly but surely gaining. So. <laughs> Surely. Stephen, you are up. <laughs> Accidental puns, they are the best. Okay, uh, 
Stephen, you are up next to speak. Your subject is the elevator pitch. So Stephen Shaw, 60 seconds on the elevator pitch, starting now. The elevator pitch is an idea, a soft... Nadia. Hesitation. Hesitation, definitely. Uh. <laughs> uh, so Nadia, you have 56 seconds on the elevator pitch, starting now. I think we can draw interesting parallels between the elevator pitch and a just a minute speech. In a just a minute speech. <laughs> Kinsey? Uh, just a minute speech. Repetition. Yes. <laughs> repetition of just a minute and speech. <laughs> Kinsey, you gain a point. You have 46 seconds remaining on the elevator pitch, starting now. The elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. That one's buzzy. Deviation. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, I, I would have actually accepted a repetition challenge by that stage. <laughs> we have to have some interest in the game. <laughs> so, Nadia, correct. Uh, you have 39 seconds on the elevator pitch, starting now. The elevator pitch is a way that you sell your startup idea to venture capitalists. What you do is go into an elevator on the zero floor. Then you go up. <laughs> Repetition, that was the third you? Yes, yes, there was. Uh, Stephen, so you gained a point. You have, you have 25 seconds remaining on the elevator pitch, starting now. The elevator pitch is an interesting idea in the American economy. A lot of my fellow attendees have, haven't, have had the opportunity to give the elevator's pitch, because not only are they developers, but they're entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs such as Josh Knoll. <laughs> You've been challenged. <laughs> Adam. Pick one of the three. I, <laughs> uh, I would have gone with hesitation. On yeah, that me occasion. too. <laughs> yeah, hesitation. Okay, Adam, you've gained a point. Uh, you've just broken into double figures. You have 12 seconds remaining, starting now. An elevator pitch begins with four primary components. First, you position yourself inside of an elevator with another individual. Second. Excellent. So Adam Cuppy speaking at the end of that minute has uh, tied once again for that all important second place space. Uh, Kinsey still ahead, Stephen, just a little bit behind. And Nadia, you're next to speak. Your subject is microservices. <laughs> you like that one. OK, so <laughs> Nadia, you have 60 seconds on microservices starting now. I have read a lot of things on microservices because when working at Pivotal, I was on their Cloud Foundry team. When on that... Hesitation. Hesitation. Yes, you're definitely running yeah. out of steam, I'm afraid. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Kenzie, you have got 49 seconds on microservices starting now. Microservices is something that we are trying to implement on my team at Go Spot Check, and it's kind of been a complete mess. So I've been learning a lot and seeing different libraries such as Kafka for sending messages between different services. There's also uh, another library called Kinesis I haven't done anything with, but interested in checking out what it does and why. Repetition of and. There was a few ands there. Yeah. Uh, so Adam, you have 12 points and 13 seconds on microservices starting now. Microservices cannot be confused with either Microsoft or microfridges. It's important to note that as a service. <laughs> Not here. Hesitation. Hesitation, that. definitely. <laughs> uh. So, Nadia, you have 4.1 seconds on microservices starting now. At RailsConf last year, DHA. Adam. Uh, derailment, I don't know. No, H, H. No. Hesitation yes. of H. <laughs> Hesitation of H. <laughs> Ooh. 
I should give a point to that fellow on the front row there. <laughs> commonly yeah. used acronym or commonly used shortening? Uh, not for the topic on the board, yeah, though. Yeah, <laughs> If you shorten microservices to DHH, you have problems. <laughs> it's one word. Uh, it's not one word. Oh my God. There is an established form here, and yes, it was repetition of H. Uh, <laughs> you're not popular, but you are right. <laughs> you, you did. Uh, <laughs> So, Adam Cuppy, you have half a second <laughs> on the subject of microservices starting now. I would have accepted a challenge if it had come before the minute. The minute happened. Sorry. Uh, 13, that's higher than 12. That, yeah, so it's 14 for speaking at the end of that minute. Oh, oh my God. Feel the hate there. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, uh, Kinsey, you're up next to speak for the start of the round. Your subject is games for developers. Uh, games for developers. Kinsey and Durham, 60 seconds starting now. Games for developers is a confusing subject, but I recently watched a talk by Ernie Miller at Nordic Ruby about video games and how they relate to developers and the tools that developers... Repetition of and. I... Really? Somebody How here multiple ones? <laughs> I think uh, the audience has it, once again. Not my mm. fault. Uh, <laughs> so, Adam, you've gained a point. You are just creeping up on Kinsey at this stage. Ah. It's getting interesting. Uh, so, Adam, you've got the subject of games for developers. And 44 seconds starting now. The available games for developers are quite extensive, but I'm not going to bother to go through that list now. Instead, what I'll talk about is the start of games for developers begins at the point in which you have an idea, and then that individual chooses to move on to the next thought within the framework of the game itself. For games with developers and for developers, I've decided to sit on the topic of what involves the game that you choose. Kinsey. Repetition of game. Repetition of game is absolutely correct. Oh. <coughs> so, Kinsey, you've regained the topic with 13 <laughs> seconds to go. Games for developers starting now. Games for developers could be <coughs> any game, such as World of Warcraft, Halo, anything that makes you Anything? That was an incorrect <laughs> challenge. <laughs> no. So, Kinsey, you gain a point for being interrupted. You have 90% uh, of a second remaining <laughs> on games for developers starting now. Adam, you were doing so well, and you know, just so handed well. that away. One minute left. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Kinsey gains a point at the end of that round. Adam, you are up first to speak, and your topic is DHH, which doesn't actually fit on the screen. <laughs> if you're wondering who to blame for that, it's me. <laughs> um, I will accept the uh, correct long form, which escapes me right now. <laughs> However, uh, so Adam, you have 60 seconds on DHH starting now. DHH is the initials for David Hannemeyer Hansen of Denmark. David Hannemeyer Hansen is an individual that has brought a lot of opportunity to this world in front of us. At GoRuco, we have focused entirely on the opportunities that the Ruby community has as a result of DHH or David Hannemeyer Hansen. From Denmark, he started by... Nadia? Repetition of Denmark. I think I heard a repetition of uh, Ruby as well earlier on. Nobody picked up on that one. Uh, so, Nadia, you have 35 seconds remaining. You've gained a point, and you have 35 seconds on DHH starting now. I am very happy to have challenged Adam on the topic of DHH, given an earlier conflict when he interrupted me on another. Adam. Uh, 
is it diversion? What's the word? Deviation. 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 Yes. I don't know. Let's. Ooh, because that was about. It was about the challenge me. about no, DHH. It was about me. What do we think? No. Uh, Nadia we gains a point for uh, audience support. <laughs> And 23 seconds remaining on DHH, starting now. I was fortunate to meet DHH at RailsConf last year. He gave an interesting keynote on the differences between microservices and monoliths, and how Rails was like a backpack for him, which included action cable and interesting components. Repetition of and. Yeah. Yeah. That was lots of ands. <laughs> Interesting, Adam. You have 1.9 seconds remaining on DHH, starting now. David Hannemeyer Hansen. <laughs> that is, Goruko, all we have time for. Uh, thank you so much for listening. You have been my favorite audience so far on this game. All that remains at this moment in time is for me to thank the, uh, Ian Messeter, the originator of this game, and Nicholas Parsons, who's been presenting it in the real world for almost 50 years. Thank you very much for listening, and please, once again, show your appreciation for the panel. <laughs> Stephen Shaw! <laughs> All right, we've got Adam a five. Adam Cuppy. Woo! And today's winner, Kinsey Ann Durham. Thank you very much. Goodbye.